Hello guys and welcome to my review of the new Sony WF-1000XM3. Alright, so we're going to start it off with the price. Currently you can pick these up for $229. US dollars. Moving on to the build quality, overall it's great. It does have a very nice solid feel to the plastics uh, used in the case. This black portion here is a sort of like a soft plastic, so it has a very nice touch to it. Overall, it's a great heft. The plastics uh, for the earpieces themselves is also pretty dense, it's very good as well. It doesn't feel like it'll break if you drop them. Uh, the hinge mechanism for the case here also feels quite sturdy and as you see when you drop the ear pieces in it will Latch in via a magnet so you won't accidentally put these in and then you take them out and realize that it wasn't charging So the magnets guide the ear pieces in so once it drops right in you can see the red LEDs on the sides of the earpiece signify that they are charging this here signifies the power uh, for the cases themselves. So overall build quality is great. Comfort, uh, I would say that these are also very good in terms of the comfort. After about two hours or so, I would say that the air tips, it didn't really matter which air tips I chose. After about two hours or so, the air tips will result in my ears feeling a tad itchy. So if I take them out for say maybe five minutes or so, give my ears a rest, then my ears will feel pretty much back to normal and then I could put the ear pieces back in and go for another two hours or so. But overall, I don't feel any any aches or pains from any pressure points from the ear pieces. It's just the ear tips themselves and how they uh, react to my ear canals. Battery life has been greatly improved in the new 1000XM3 Wireless uh, Freedom Edition, which is what the WF stands for. Uh, the previous generation, they skipped the Mark II, so the Mark I's had about a three hour battery life, um, and you got about nine hours total, because the case will provide two more charges. But with the new 1000XM3, you get six hours on active noise cancellation. Depends on the volume, however. So if the volume is higher, that six hours will definitely reduce down to maybe four and a half to five hours. But in a perfect case scenario, if the volume is medium or lower, you should get about six hours of use on active noise cancellation. If you turn the active noise cancellation off, you will get about eight hours of use. The case will provide the air pieces three additional charges. So with active noise canceling, you're looking at about up to 24 hours of use. And without active noise cancellation, you're looking at up to 32 hours of use, which is quite extraordinary for this category. Um, truly wireless earphones have come a long way in terms of their uh, runtime as well as their connection and their sound quality. So it's great to see that Sony is pretty much up there in terms of the battery performance while offering all of these features, especially the active noise canceling. Cool thing is, like always, the case charges with USB-C. So this is pretty much future-proof and if you use an Android phone, you can charge your case with the same cable as your Android phone, as well as most laptops nowadays. The case um, does support a quick charge. I believe 10 minutes will provide you a hour and a half of use, which is great in case you forgot to charge them up. Uh, juice them up for 10 minutes and you should be good for a very quick domestic flight or maybe a quick succession in the gym or maybe a quick commute. Um, overall, this is a great performer in terms of the battery. Now, the feature set on the Sony WF-1000XM3 is pretty extensive. You get touch controls on either earpiece. So this is the right earpiece over here. Right earpiece can be responsible for playback control. So your typical tap to pause, double tap to skip forward, triple tap to go back. And the left earpiece is responsible for your ambient sound control. So if you tap it once, once you take the earpieces out, they automatically resort to active noise canceling. So if you tap it once, it goes into ambient sound mode where it'll pipe in the sound depending on the settings that you've dictated within the application that is basically the companion. I highly recommend that you get the Sony Headphones Connect app. So one tab brings it into ambient aware mode. This is great like if you're walking through the city, if you're exercising, or if you're at the office or at home and you just want to be aware of your surroundings, you want to hear if someone has to speak to you, if you want to hear the doorbell, things of that nature. And if you tap it again, it'll turn the active noise cancellation slash ambient sound completely off and basically convert these into a normal pair of Bluetooth earbuds. And the pro side to that is the sound quality does improve 
as well as you do get two more extra hours of battery for the air pieces runtime. Other features include left and right air piece uh, independent functionality. So what that means is you can use either air piece to answer or answer a call, sorry, or listen to audio, whether it be a video or music, doesn't matter which air piece it is, which is a amazing feature. I love that because this can effectively double the battery life if you don't need to use the air pieces in stereo because the air piece theoretically gets about six hours of active noise canceling use. If you use one air piece and you're just walking around the office, you want to be aware that six hours. So when that air piece dies, you can then take the other air piece off the case and now you have another six hours of use. So you can play around with it there. It's pretty cool. Um, you also get um, a quick attention mode. So with the left air piece, if you press and hold, just like the over ear models, it will suppress the, uh, the music and it will reverse the microphone so you can hear your ambient sound. So you can quickly have a conversation with someone or quickly hear an announcement. Do keep in mind that these controls can be reversed. So you can make the right earpiece handle the ambient wear controls while the left earpiece handles the playback. Or you could just do it the way it is in stock where the left earpiece handles the ambient aware controls and the right earpiece handles the uh, playback. Now, one of my favorite features other than the in-app EQ, which I don't really use, but it is cool to have the ability to adjust the tonal balance, is the fact that I just found out that these have a hot swap ability, which is what I loved about my Power Beats and the way it connected with Apple products and other products as well. What this is, is suppose you are connected to your computer because these only connect to one device at a time. So suppose you have these uh, hooked up to your computer or your phone and you want to have another device that has already been previously paired to this connect to it. You don't have to go to your existing device and hit disconnect Bluetooth or you don't have to put this into pairing mode. What you do is on the other device that you've already paired to, you just look for the Sony's in the Bluetooth list menu, you hit connect, these air pieces will automatically unpair themselves from the existing device that they're connected to and then pair themselves to that device, which is seamless. It's amazing when I'm in the office. Um, I literally just, when I come in from a lunch break or whatever, I go to my computer, look for my Sony's, hit connect, it unpairs from my phone, then it connects to my computer. Seamless, I don't have to go to my phone, disconnect the Bluetooth and then go to the computer. It's just an amazing feature that I really haven't seen much people talk about, but I love that Sony has done this. I really hope that the Sony WH uh, Mark Forest incorporate this hot swap Bluetooth connectivity feature. Now, moving over to the active noise cancellation performance, overall, this is surprisingly really effective. It does a great job at reducing the low frequency hums that you will experience while being on a bus, on an airplane, or next to an air conditioning unit. Um, it also does a decent job at mitigating and lowering the mid, like the medium frequencies or the mid-range frequencies, which is where the uh, the vocals, where people are talking around you, like in an, a cafe environment or an office environment. It does a pretty decent job at lowering the intensity of that. And of course, the in-air seal will take care of the treble frequencies or the higher frequencies because active noise canceling is kind of inadequate in terms of combating those very sudden and sharp frequencies. So overall, you turn the noise cancellation on on these air pieces and you are literally going to definitely pick up how quiet your environment has now become. Then you just turn on some music or a video or a podcast and you literally just melt away in your own world. Very, very good job, Sony. Um, the first gen Sony's did a pretty mediocre job in terms of blocking out noise. Most of the noise blocked out was from the air tips and the inner seal. But with these, you get a combination of what you normally naturally get from a in-air seal along with actually very effective noise canceling. So bravo in terms of the performance. Um, the ambient aware mode on these, however, it does effectively allow you to listen in on your environments, but the naturalness to the way the sound is, is kind of off. It has a whooshy sound like the over-ear brother does, the WH-1000XM3. It doesn't sound as natural as the Bose noise canceling 700s or the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless, where it literally sounds like you no longer have the headphones on your head. With these, the audio that comes in 
sounds forced, it sounds kind of wishy, but you do definitely hear what's going on around you. And it's great to be able to have that feature as opposed to not having it at all. Uh, let's see. So one thing I've noticed with a lot, pretty much all active noise canceling headphones, it really depends on the model, how effectively it can suppress it. But when active noise cancellation is engaged on this particular product here, when you raise the volume to a little bit higher or near max volume or at max volume, these don't really get that loud. So you can max these out and it'll still be comfortable to your ears. So at about max volume or near that, when you're listening to any songs that have quite complex uh, treble frequencies going on, it begins to distort in the treble range when the active noise cancellation or the ambient aware uh, is activated. However, when you turn off the active noise cancellation, those distortion artifacts completely go away. So it's the active noise cancellation essentially uh, misinterpreting those frequencies from the earpieces as the sound from around you. So it kind of jumbles up the audio. It's not a big issue, but it's noticeable when you're critically listening that it is distorting the treble frequencies on certain songs that have complex passages in that region. Um, this does happen with other headphones. I've had this happen with my Bose, my Sonys. Usually when you crank the volume up to a higher level, the the audio starts to leak out from the air earphones themselves. If it's an earpiece or from the ear cuffs if it's a headphone that audio from the music leaks out and then the active noise cancellation mics will pick that up and cause that distortion of course when i turn the active noise cancellation off on those other products that have active noise cancellation the uh, distortion goes away so it's pretty much a limitation of the technology but i just wanted to notate that to you guys that this does suffer from some slight treble distortion with active noise cancelling and if you have the volume um, high as well as that treble region being quite complex from the music. So moving over to the Bluetooth connection and codecs, overall the connection quality on this is actually pretty good. Um, these use a simultaneous connection, which is great. There's no more uh, master slave configuration. So each earpiece has their own independent connection to the source. This greatly increases the uh, battery life as well as reduces the latency. So the battery life increases because there is no relay system going on like the first generation of these had, as well as a lot of other truly wireless where the audio comes into either the right or the left earbud. And then one of those earbuds is the master earbud, which then relays that information over to the other earbud. So what this does is it causes one earbud to have to do two things, which is receive a signal and then transmit the signal. So this is gonna hurt its battery life, as well as it lowers the latency, well, not lowers, it increases the latency because now the signal goes to one earpiece, goes to the other earpiece, so it has to create a wireless sync. So it's going to delay the actual sound that comes out of the earpiece on purpose so that the other earpiece is in sync with the master earpiece. And this may sound like a little complicated, but basically it'll increase the latency when you have a master slave configuration. So thankfully these have independent configurations where they connect to the source via their own signal. This also allows them to be used independently, like I said earlier, where either the left or the right earpiece can be used. Codec support um, is pretty decent. You have AAC support and of course the SBC. AAC is actually excellent if you're using an Apple device. And the reason being so is because of the processing algorithms, uh, the way Apple kind of puts that AAC codec, it's on the high priority list. So Android devices, um, if that processor schedule or the algorithm is not tuned for performance and tuned for more battery saving. The AAC on Android typically isn't as good as the AAC encoder on Apple devices. So AAC can actually sound like aptX and there's measurements um, that'll back up my claims. Uh, sound guys, I believe, did an article on that. So don't really worry about these having AAC. If you're using an Apple device, these are gonna sound excellent, especially through Apple Music because Apple Music streams via AAC. Um, Spotify, <clears throat> 
I believe that that is using og verbis, um, so that will get uh, transcoded again. But AAC, after I believe 100 transcodes, have been shown to not have any uh, impact on the audio quality. So I'm getting scientific here. Don't worry with AAC on these. With Android, it's a bit of a, um, a concern because the Android encoder isn't as good as the Apple encoder, but if you're using an Apple device, these are gonna sound excellent. If you're using Android, you're probably not gonna hear much of a difference, but it's not gonna be as good as Aptex or Aptex HD or Aptex uh, Low Latency or LDAC. <clears throat> Sony does use its own processing algorithm, which is the DSEEHX, which is supposed to upscale the non-lossless uh, audio to high res. Uh, supposedly, I, I mean, to be honest with you guys, I really don't hear a difference when I switch it on and off, but hey, I just leave it on because it doesn't destroy the music when it's on, but hey, I, I mean, if it's not uh, doing anything to my music, why not just leave it on? It supposedly uh, increases the resolution. But what I do see in terms of the measurements is that it's re it's increasing the the frequencies in the music that we really can't even hear because the high res music is more about increasing the frequencies beyond 20 kilohertz, which is not going to be much benefit to the human because we don't hear beyond 20 kilohertz. But that's another topic in its own. So. Bluetooth connection on these is pretty good. Overall, uh, they're quite stable. I'd only have issues with these when I'm walking through the city of New York because there's a lot of wireless interference there. So I can't really knock them for not being able to sustain a connection, but it does occasionally cut in and out when I'm in the city because of all that interference. Moving on to the call quality, I would say that this is surprisingly good, especially from a Sony product. Um, these have a very strong noise gate. So I would recommend that you need to speak at a moderate to louder volume into the mic so it doesn't cut your voice out because what's happening here is it's really suppressing all of the noise around you. So whatever it picks up near feel, which should be your voice, is what comes through to the other line. So you gotta speak moderate, which is kind of like a normal natural tone. You can't really whisper into these because your voice will get cut out by the noise gate. But overall, due to the very strong noise, gate there's a little bit of background noise that enters into the call stream so the person on the other end should definitely be able to understand what you're saying so surprisingly good call performance i hope they integrate that into the sony wh uh, mark IVs because the current mark threes the headphone edition is pretty mediocre when it comes to the call quality in moderate to loud environments so pretty much the most important, which is the sound quality. And overall, these surprised me. These are actually a very, very good sounding pair of earphones. They're not my favorite sound, and I still would give that nod to the Momentums. I like the Momentums heft and the, the sort of boosted lower mid-range and bass and the kind of like, it still has a full upper treble, but it has a very warm and hefty sound with the Momentums. But the Sonys, the Sonys has a, it's pretty neutral across the board with a very, very slight tilt to the warmer uh, sort of sound spectrum. Um, the bass extends very well. It's definitely not really emphasized too much. There's no upper bass blow, no bleed ins to the mid range. It's a very, very neutral bass that has a very slight tinge to being a warmer sound. Vocals come through a very nice heft. They're very clear, they're well balanced, great tonality and the timing and the kind of like the, the sense of speed and how everything just kind of snaps is very good with this uh, earpiece. Thankfully, because of the treble, the treble is, it's full, it's there, but it's not uh, sibilant. It's not, there's no peaks in the treble range. So I feel like there's a dip somewhere in the, the lower treble, upper mid-range region to kind of reduce the sense of sibilance. But that dip isn't too drastic, so it doesn't really reduce the sense of presence in the upper mid range. So you still get that detail, you get that clarity there, but it's suppressed, so it comes to more smoother and more of a, a warmer sound. Um, upper treble on these, it's very full, it's a nice airy sound, which very, pretty much very much uh, lends to the sense of depth that you can experience in the sound stage. The imaging is quite good, it's very articulated. You can hear a lot of what's going on and the overall sound is pretty much like I said previously, it's slightly warm. 
um, but very clear and clean. It's a great sound. Um, you really can't go wrong with that. It works very well across a wide array of genres and you're going to hear a lot of detail without it being, you know, strident or harsh in uh, tonal balance and stuff of that nature. That was one of the issues that I had with the Power Beats Pro. The Power Beats Pro had a very nice, neutral, tight, full, punchy bass. The mid-range was also quite very evenly uh, distributed from the bass. There was no bleeding. There was a nice, even uh, integration there. But the treble frequencies of the Power Beats Pro was slightly pushed forward. Um, it could help a bit when you're at the gym. It gives you that lively, energetic nature. But it does introduce listening fatigue when you have a lot of sibilance in the vocals or if certain frequencies are kind of strident and piercing, which I did get a lot of issues with with the Power Beats Pro. And it didn't help that the Power Beats Pro had pretty pretty lackluster noise isolation. So what will happen is naturally when you go outside with the Power Beats Pro, a lot of the ambient noise will seep into the music. So you're gonna naturally wanna raise the volume, which then now means that that treble becomes even more offensive. So as a result, these have dethroned my Power Beats Pro as my favorite overall truly wireless. These literally kind of tick all the boxes. You have great noise isolation, which is very important to the sound experience because of its active noise cancellation. It doesn't really matter how good anything sounds when you're out commuting. If it has poor noise isolation, that sound quality is literally gonna go out the window because of all the environmental sounds is going to destroy the dynamic range and the subtle nuances in the music. You have a great Bluetooth connection and it also has simultaneous connection, so you can use either earpiece. The connection is pretty strong and stable. You have USB-C charging, great sound quality, great microphone performance. Battery life is really up there in terms of the truly wireless category. If someone's looking for the best truly wireless earphones that you can currently buy on the market, I highly, highly recommend the Sony WF-1000XM3. So. If so if there's something I did not cover in this review, please feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, I forgot to mention, these pass the one hand test in terms of opening the lid for the case, as you can see here, just like the AirPods. All right. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Later.